again here we are this is Miss Darling in the studio back for part two of our small handbook size journal that we're in the process of making I made the cover which you can see in part one so if you haven't seen that yet and want to see it I'll put a link in the description box so you can easily find it this is the inside of the cover and then the back cover and um, I explain step by step how I made this in part one and we are now in part two where we are going to be discussing the pages that will go inside before I do that I should mention that the background here is a leftover part of the watercolor painting that I had done so I cut it up into a tag and added some of the same fabric and lace and a butterfly and then this is the reverse side which shows some of the same this was a leftover piece from the master board that I used on the inside so this will make a nice little tag to go inside the journal once we get all finished now because this is a smaller journal it is six inches tall by about five and a half inches wide folded I used eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper that I printed some laces and floral designs on and then over printed with my lined paper so that the pages in the journal are all pretty much going to be lined and you might not like lines but I do I I tend if I don't have lines to guide me I and I'm writing I tend to kind of go at a slant and then of course I'm unhappy at the end so I've done lined papers and so far I have pretty much the booklet put together the way I want to and I'll show you on a couple of sheets what I did to achieve this so this is going to be the inside cover of my journal and of course you can do anything you want you could fill the whole journal up with just plain sheets or coffee dyed paper or you know decorated paper of your choice but I thought I'm going to stay with my theme of flowers and lace and um, so I designed this for my cover and that is the back page which is from the same sheet and you open it up and I've been including a part of a doily some hand stitched coffee dyed paper I have in my stash here's just a plain sheet of white lined paper some light flowers in the background everything lined and so you can see I tried to keep everything kind of soft and pastel other than the cover and um, there's plenty of writing space here I am going to do some further embellishment but I'm going to wait and do that after I have put the whole signature and attached it to the cover and then we'll come back and I have some ephemera here that I think I might like to use but we'll see it could turn out that I don't care for it at all and, and I go a different direction but I just wanted you to see and here's the midway point of the signature and then on the back side you get the uh, flip side of the pages as you know and here's here's part of a doily and so on and more stitched coffee dyed paper and then we come to the doily at the end and the inside back cover and then the back cover so I used eight and a half by eleven normal paper size for those of us in the United States of America 
and if you live in a different part of the globe you'll of course have to adapt and uh, make it work for you. So I cut my sheets six inches and I did many of them one at a time by hand because placement is very important to me and I didn't want them to wind up you know kind of scattered all over the place with no real compositional design so um, here's a sheet without the imagery and these are all vintage women wearing lace outfits or lace something um, whether it's in their bonnet or their dress they're all uh, vintage lace imagery and I thought that would be fun to you know kind of keep to the theme of the journal itself so this with the exception of the images I have a sheet here with no images at all and you can see it has a dark blue background which carries forth the kind of blue black background of the cover and there's a uh, little blue flowers in the fabric and so I wanted to kind of carry a little bit of that influence through along with the pink and the beige and so what I did in order to cut them cleanly by hand I used a blade and you know it's really helpful if you have a grid of some kind below to help you you know line up your paper so you make your cuts nice and straight and when you print off at least my printer always leaves about a 1 8 inch white border or shall I say an unpainted border if it was a colored paper obviously it wouldn't be white and so I wanted to be able to decide where on this sheet I would make my cuts because it didn't always line up exactly the same and so obviously you're going to have some wastage which I did and that's okay because I always save everything I will use it some other time some other place but I just wanted to pull out and show you the parts of the paper that I cut off and just to say that you can easily glue these to a piece of cardstock and then trim off the excess and then you've got a lot of paper that you might consider using for instance uh, for a belly band if you want to include something like that in your journal you know you just turn it sideways and and cut it to fit and you can glue that on and so it carries the same theme forward in your belly band or you could use as a vertical band and you know add more ephemera if you choose to or not so you know just um, you know keep your scraps and see what you may want to do with them if not for this project then for something else so I literally it, in order to get the placement where I wanted I would literally take my my straight edge and and mark off where my six inches were to go vertically and then just cut straight across and by sizing the journal the way I did once I trim away these white borders and fold it in half I have exactly the width that I need now of course the pages toward the middle of your signature are going to stick out further you have to decide whether you're okay with that or not and if you're not then once you've got it all you know together then for instance I'm going to trim mine and so I'm going to use my cover as my guide as to where I'm going to trim. I will definitely trim down this side but I think I'm probably okay on the top and by just sliding it in here 
you can see that once it's closed up, the only thing that's going to show would be this edge. So I will be trimming that back to at least the size of the cover. And then everything will look real neat, clean, and, and professional. But you can do as you like. Now I wanted to point out one thing, being an asymmetrical designer, as you know that I am, if you've watched my videos for any length of time, when I went to trim up my doily, and this is a, I believe it's a 12 inch, let me just check, 10 or, no it isn't, it's, it's about a 10 inch diameter paper doily. And uh, so what all I did was fold it in half, like so, and then you just decide, do you want your doily to, you know, be in the center? You know, if so, for instance, uh, with this one, you literally could cut around here and it would go from top to bottom. Um, or you could, you know, make it, you know, just cut straight across and, and straight across down here and then you would have a, uh, a doily page that looks like this. But being the asymmetrical person I am, I drop mine down like so and then I cut across here. And then I had enough left over of the doily to turn that upside down so the straight edge is at the bottom and put it elsewhere in the journal. So let's just kind of take a look. You can see here is the first section of the doily. And here is the part that I had cut off. So it's a smaller piece and you can position it wherever you want. I could position it at the top Like so. I don't think that looks uh, as good. I could do it kind of in the middle. Mm. Not grabbing me. I think in my case I'm going to position it down toward the bottom. And uh, I think that is the best placement for it. And so I just wanted to point that out that you get a different feeling depending on where you cut your doily, assuming it's larger than your um, the height of your journal. Okay, so now here's a typical lined page, uh, a piece of paper, and the first time I printed this, it was I set my computer to print at 50%. Uh, and but the lines were pretty dark so I pulled it back and this is a 75% reduction of the lines that I used when I created this and this is what I recommend you if you want to have lines uh, great I love lined paper just you know really reduce the darkness of your line yeah, put it as faint as possible. You want it to be seen, but you don't want it to dominate any page regardless of whether it's designed or not. And so then all I did here was, because this is white paper, I didn't have to worry about trimming off the top and the bottom. So I left the top alone and, uh, and then I just measured down six inches and then I, I cut right across this line just below the six inch mark so that I would get a nice straight, you know, I could even use that line as a guide uh, to cut my paper so that I get something that's, you know, really nice and straight. And then um, from there, once it's stuck in, in the booklet, um, you'll wind up 
trimming off more at the top in order so that your pages don't exceed six inches in height. So that's how I did that. And obviously you can gang cut if you've got a large paper cutter. Um, you could also cut with scissors, but I think by far and away the best way, I have a large paper cutter, but it was not useful to me in trying to do things one page at a time. The paper is just too thin and it didn't work out. So I used the blade and, and it's a good way to go. Just um, make sure you try to get your cuts as straight as possible. Now the other idea I had, which I, I didn't do, but I had been thinking about uh, tearing my paper to go into this, but it just began to take on a little more formal feeling and um, so I didn't think tearing was, was really appropriate. Now what I plan to do, and we'll get to that after I sew this in place, I have these other little images of um, women, you know, vintage women wearing lace outfits, and I may use those. I also have these little floral, pink floral stickers that I might use here and there. Uh, I can't remember where I got these from, but they're kind of cool. And of course the colors are nice and appropriate. And so we'll see. But that's the direction that we're going. So now, I think what I'm going to do first before I stick this in the journal is I'm going to trim off the excess over here. So what you want to do is make sure that each page inside, in particularly the doilies, I want the doilies uh, positioned at the bottom or almost at the bottom, and they are. So you just kind of tap it, tap it a bit to, you know, get them where you want. And then I think it's always wise at this point to clamp the booklet off. Because when you start cutting through multiple pages at one time, you don't, you know, there's might be slippage and you want to minimize that as much as possible. And anytime you're going through multiple pages, you don't want to just press down with all your might and try to cut all of them at once. Uh, that just doesn't work. And it, you know, it just isn't even pleasant from a physical standpoint. So what you want to do is, is line up your straight edge and maybe I'll use a shorter one so I have better control. Although it's not quite, you know, it is six inches, but I'm, I'm a, a little over in a sense, so I don't think that's why. So I'll go back to using this and I'm going to turn it over upside down so that the straight edge is real nice and flat right along the edge of my cover. And I'm just going to sacrifice whatever is else is there and, and I'm going to do not a real hard pass, but you know, just just a uh, you know, use a little bit of force on it, and you'll start to see the top pages falling away. And so, just be careful to keep your straight edge in place, and keep doing one pass after another. Obviously, the fresher your blade is and the sharper it is, the fewer passes you'll probably have to make. 
and mine I'm sure isn't the sharpest one anymore but to whatever degree it's cutting just keep passing your blade through being careful as much as possible not to move the journal at all so that once you get down to the bottom and you've made your final pass you'll have a nice clean edge and see there we have beautiful came out very nice now I've got some uneven heights up here I think maybe it might be worth doing the same thing to the top so I'm going to reclamp and uh, then do the same thing again using my top cover as my guide I want everything to line up with it and we do the whole thing again moderate pressure holding everything in place don't be in a rush doing this that one didn't take as many passes because I didn't have as many sheets that were taller then so there you have it everything is nice and trimmed up you have a choice uh, perhaps best done at this stage of maybe taking an ink pad and going around each page and inking them up to kind of make them look a little more vintage and I think I will do that and so I'll be back after I finish that process. I have taken my walnut ink stain and I have gone around all of the edges of each page and just, you know, added a little bit of coloring there. And don't forget to do the uh, spine section. And then you just flip it over and do the opposite side and it just you know makes it I think look uh, a lot better especially if you've got white pages in there um, you know to just kind of do that and what I did with some of the pages I took some of the my dauber and you know just put a little bit of brown ink here and there in squibbly form and uh, you know you don't have to do any of this if you don't want to, but I like uh, doing it, and I think it adds to the journal. So now we're ready to attach our signature to the cover, and this is thin enough, and there's only one signature, so uh, we can easily get by using just an owl to make our hole and um, so I'm going to start uh, on the inside and I'm going I'm going to put three holes in it one at the top one just above middle and one at the bottom and so I'm going to come down you can just eyeball this approximately half an inch from the top and I'm going to push through all of the layers until I see a hole emerge on here. And then I'm going to push my owl through a little ways to make sure the, the hole is going to be big enough and also so I can find it again. 
and then like I said you know my center is approximately right here I'm gonna go a little above center and that puts me right about here so I'm gonna do the same thing just take your time and carefully push the owl through I have a link in the description box to one if you need help in, in purchasing one. And then I'm going to come about half an inch up from the bottom and put my third hole in right here. Now in case you're wondering why I go a little above center, it's just that that was kind of how I w was taught that if you if you always do your holes, the middle hole a little above center, and and then you designate the shorter distance between the hole and the top as uh, up, then you'll never get confused as to which side goes up. The the closer the hole is to one hole that means that is up and the other section the other side is down and that has saved me that just that little tip has saved me from sewing a signature in upside down so now we have our holes designated on the cover and so all we're going to do is lay our signature in, making sure that it's right in the middle of the journal, not too high and not too low. And then we're just going to make a little black ink dot there to line up with the holes that we made in the cover. Okay, so now here I can see I have a hole here, a hole here, and a hole down here. Now I take an embroidery needle that has a larger hole on the end and embroidery thread. And I measure off three times the height of my journal. and go ahead and cut. Now I know that's going to give me plenty of thread to sew this together and have enough left over to tie it off. So then I just feed it through my needle. Oh, I need to put the holes in my signature. Now you know, again, make sure that you um, have everything lined up the way you want. And it's a good idea to clamp, clamp the pages together. And um, I've had problems in the past with the holes in the middle of the signature not winding up in the middle of my page or if I make sure they line up in the middle then I have a problem on the outside with so I think my problem is that I may have been putting my clamps on when the journal is open so don't do that. Put your clamps on uh, one half of the journal while it is folded over. 
maybe that will stop that from happening to me. Okay, so my markings are back here. And let's see how... Oh, I think the best thing to do first is to... Use the owl again. And push it through. I do have a hole punch. A big bite. I think it's called a big bite. But I'm trying to do this in a simple way, particularly for anybody who doesn't have one of those. You can do it by hand with an owl. Just use a little patience and okay, so these are lining up pretty good. Alright, so once your holes are in, you take your thread and you start from the inside. You see what I mean about them getting a little skewed. You do it right on the outside and then there doesn't necessarily line up properly on the inside, but it still comes together. So then I'm going to push my needle and thread through the middle section, making sure I leave plenty of tail. And then I come up to the top and I go through the top hole. And then I drop down to the bottom hole. This sure looks odd. Okay, and I go down through the bottom hole. And then I come back up. Got entangled here. Then I come back up through the middle hole. I guess it's clear up here, huh? and pull it all the way through. So now everything is threaded through, all three holes, and you take your tail ends here, and you want to make sure that one end is on one side of the thread running vertically, and the other is on the other side, so that you can uh, tie it off and so you pull it until it's you know not super tight super taut uh, but just enough so that you don't wind up with wiggle room and your inside kind of flopping around inside the journal and then I put three three um, knots and if you want to add a dangle to this, as a lot of people do, then leave them long so you can have that to work with. In this case, I'm not going to. I'm just going to cut those off about half an inch away and um, call it a day. And so now my pages are nicely adhered into the 
journal into the cover and as you know you can flip through and kind of see how it it all is coming together and I'm going to come to the back with more stitched coffee dyed paper. By the way, I will point out the reason that is stitched is that when you're coffee dyeing paper, it, you know, once the paper gets wet, it becomes very, very fragile and can tear on you. And I buy a lot of coffee dyed paper from a gal on Etsy and some of it came in torn. She did not weed out, and I thought, okay, I'm just gonna take the, the area that's torn and I'm going to zigzag it shut with my sewing machine, and I wound up liking the concept so much. I've done some zigzag sewing in, here and there, for no reason at all, just because I can. Anyway, uh, I thought I would just mention that. So, now we have attached our journal. We're closing in on now talking about how we want to, um, you know, jazz it up a little bit more with some ephemera. You don't have to do any of this. You could call it a day at, at this point. It's up to you. But I think I would like to add a little bit more of this concept of lace and wearing lace and enjoying lace, which we all do, and maybe some of these little, little um, pinkish floral stickers might find a home. So let's, let's kind of go through it and see. Um, this is a page that obviously nobody can journal on because it's so dark, but do we want to add something of interest there? Or maybe up here where the lace pattern seems to come to a, a, a place, you know, a center. And uh, that might be nice there. But do I want to start out with something quite so bold? I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'll do something a little more subdued that has some of the beige tones that I see over here, and I like that better. So I'm going to go with that. I'm going to ink up the edges of the paper where I didn't quite get the most perfect cut. Because I don't want those white edges showing. And I'm just going to plop it in there, right there. That is, if I can get some glue to come out. What's the matter with you? I may be getting close to needing to replace that little tip there. I like it because it puts out a very fine line of glue and especially if you're doing smaller pieces or you know uh, delicately cut fussy cuts like on butterflies and stuff and you need just a real thin bead of glue. It just works perfectly, but of course it um, can plug up on you. Okay, so that's kind of established these two ladies and her, they've established kind of a 
a feeling for this journal and um, what else might we do maybe I'll add one of these little pink stickers uh, maybe over here to bring a little of that pink coloring over to this side so let's see what these look like I've never used any of them before and it'll be real subtle it's kind of cool I like that And moving on. I don't have very many of these ladies wearing lace, so um, I want to spread them out throughout the journal and not clump them up in one place and then run out. I think I'll just go ahead and ink all these up while I'm at it. Well, be sure and check my Etsy shop because I'm going to put all these images and, and the lined uh, files and uh, backgrounds in my Etsy shop. So if you want to make a journal very very similar to mine uh, you'll have the resources you need and if if you can't find it uh, <coughs> uh, give me some time to make sure I, I've, I've put it in there you can send me a message in the content if I forget to do that so anyway um, I'm going to flip on back here toward the back and stick something in back here. This is my back page. And uh, I think maybe, maybe I'll put this more colorful, you know, the stronger color one toward the back. Do I want to line it up with the lace in some way? I think we'll drop her in right there. By moving to the end right away, you preserve the concept of taking your theme from front to back. And don't accidentally run out of something to use. Okay, now we're kind of at the center section, which is a rather important area, the middle of the signature, and there's really not a whole lot going on. It's a nice uh, green print. It actually started out pink, and I changed the color to green. But I got some issues down here where the hole didn't quite line up in the middle. And uh, so what can we do to distract from that? Do I want to use two together? I only have three left. And uh, that one's awfully yellow. I don't know if I'll want to use that or not. Let's see on a some sort of tan page whether whether she could work out. See that yellow tone just um, it's a different color key from this. This is color key one and this is color key two and they're fighting each other. 
so I may not want to use her at all anywhere. I don't see a place. Everything is on the cool side and she's just a little too warm. So she's out of the mix. I don't know if these stickers are really uh, all that great an idea or not. They might help out carry a little bit of the pink tone over onto these bland white pages. Do I want them there or do I want them here where they're picking up? That's more almost a purplish color there. Um, I'm going to have to give this a little bit of thought and see what I want to do and come back when I have a solution. Okay, I think I found a solution. First thing I'm going to do is I'm, I'm not happy with the, the way that the hole is kind of off center, which I don't know, just seems to happen regardless of what I try to do. Um, may have to start making the holes one page at a time or one sheet of paper at a time in order to avoid that. If anybody has a suggestion or a solution to that, I would appreciate you mentioning it in the comment section. As it seems to happen to almost every journal I've ever made, and um, I'm going to cover it over with washi tape. I have this real pretty floral washi tape. I'm going to press down on one side first and then and then the other to get it to go down into the crease properly. So, you know, when you have things that happen that, you know, just aren't the way you want them to turn out, don't get discouraged. Don't think that you're the only one it happens to. I'm sure it happens to everyone now and again. And so just think it through as to what you could possibly do to correct the situation. And this has been my solution to this particular problem. to I, I decided those little pink stickers were just not gonna make me happy so I went through my stash and found some of these other washi stickers that I think are so beautiful and I pulled out what I could find that was pink and green and and pastel enough not to overwhelm the journal and see just that little bit brings this center fold right up to snuff. The pattern I put on it was very pretty and very subtle and obviously there the paper is lined for journaling but 
I just feel like the centerfold of a signature uh, needs to, you know, be one of the nicer pages of the whole journal. And uh, so we're doing our best to give it a pick me up. You just need one little teeny section to pull apart and then you're home free. So this one, for design purposes, I'm going to place it in the upper quadrant that helps balance out with this one being lower and uh, we're just going to kind of stick that one up there. Beautiful. So now let's kind of browse through and see what else we've got here. I don't know about that, it's quite yellow. Mm. I like that. This is a really quick and easy way to, um, you know, to make a really plain page like these white lined pages. Really don't have anything going on. And so this is just a really simple solution. In my example that I showed you at the beginning of part one, all the pages in that journal were coffee dyed sheets and then I had done some stamping on most of the pages and that was fine and it fit with that style of journal but this one is uh, a completely different style and I think requires a little more fussiness a little more frills and that's what I'm trying to give it I look for colors that blend well with the whole open spread. Now I'm going to go back to the center and go the other direction so that I can hopefully spread the ephemera, the enhancements around. This does have a little bit of a yellowish tint in it. Maybe I could use that one there. What else do we have here? We've got that. Hmm. I think maybe that one might be the best. I don't know, it's a good place to use up some colors that are a little harder to place. I really don't do much in the way of a obviously yellow theme in probably any of my work. And yet I have a lot of ephemera that, you know, comes in a pack that has yellow in it. So, if I have an opportunity to use some of that up, I'm going to grab it. Okay, now back to the center and forward to the left. Okay. 
I can either do something with this page or with that one, but probably not both. I like that one the best but on the other hand I still have a couple of these ladies and maybe I'll work one of those in here so it doesn't become uh, monotonous And see how nice that is, you know, when you start flipping through a page, you would come to this and then you would flip that over and you would see this partial doily down here and an image over here. And so it's really nice having that counterbalance there. I really like that. All right, back to the center and heading the other direction. That was the last one we did. So now we have a similar... Thing happening here but because I put something on the corresponding page up front I'm going to skip it here and let's see let's slip over here and what can we do I like that. I'm going with that. Back to the center and going the opposite. That was the last one we did. So I did something corresponding to this page back there. So I'm going to skip this one and go here. And uh, what have we got left? This is uh, a very cool grayish tan. Hmm. I think that one works the best color-wise. Now I've been essentially putting everything more toward the top of the page. So let's think about whether we want to come down low this time. I think we do. So I'm going to drop that in right there. Coming back to the middle. Working our way back. That was our last one. We did something on the similar spread to this one, so we're going to skip it here. And what do we have here? Uh... It's got an awful lot of orange in it. I don't know that I'll use that. Now back to this one. What I don't like is the goldish tone around the outside. I could cut that away though. 
I think overall it's just too warm. So what have we got left here? I've got four candidates. I think I like that one. Do I like it there? Or do I like it here? Coming down to the bottom. Or maybe I would rather have one that kind of points inward. That's looking more orangey. Or do I want to skip that one altogether? Maybe I'll skip that one altogether because the you know there's quite a bit going on. So I think we're gonna flip over. I hope you're able to follow along with the psychology of design that I'm using in how I go about embellishing a journal and uh, making sure that the embellishment is pretty equal from front to back. I have that there. This is similar to the spread I just did in the back. I think maybe we need to do something here. And I think that's perfect for there. Do I want it down here or up there? I think down here to balance off with that uh, zigzag there. I think that helps balance. And now flipping to the back, 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 back. I have two candidates left. Maybe now's the time to use this one that has a little more red in it to set us up for seeing that one which pretty is pretty strong. But where do I want to use it? I think we're going for here. and that finishes us up quite nicely. So, okay, let's just flip through the whole thing real quick and see if we're happy with our balance and, and distribution. Here's our front. You don't have to decorate every page. Remember the eye needs a place to rest. So 
it's not necessary to put something everywhere. We're being judicious with what we're doing. You can if you want to. I mean, it's, you know, your journal. You're the author and designer. Do what you think looks and feels right. And uh, be happy. I often wind up finishing a, a uh, video I think you know but I'm not really happy with where I finished and after I finish I give it some more thought and keep going and then have to film some more and show you the results so sometimes you just need to take some time and think about something let it germinate more in your thoughts and mind and then come back to it and take it to the next level. All right. Yes. I think, at least for right now, I'm pleased. And all I have left to do is to put my um, closure on it. And I'm going to have to hunt for it because I don't know what I did with it. So, I'll be right back. Well, I was gone a little longer than I expected. And in the interest of saving your time, I really have completed this. And I want to show you the, the finished product and how I'm enclosing it. And just finish up by uh, way of explanation. So... Here, of course, is the cover and um, the interior page. I began to feel like I did not disperse enough of this darker navy blue throughout the journal to tie it together with the pastels and the pinks and the greens. So I uh, took another sheet of the... Um, of this lace image and cut it up. I did not like the little pink sticker I had put there so I covered that over with this lady who appears on the front cover and that'll give some continuity. I probably added a few more uh, florals into it. I cut off the border that was just way too warm and yellow for me and you know it's not perfect but I think uh, it looks much better and I went ahead and used it and um, okay pressing on okay here's one of the things I did to bring the dark blue more into the entire journal I took the page that I had, the extra page I'd printed off and glued it to a piece of cardstock so that it was nice and sturdy, made the pocket, and then this little tag that I had made uh, with some of the off cuts, um, you know, just sticks in there nicely, and I had this other tag that I felt like looked good with it, and so then we Okay, that's on one of the coffee dyed sheets. And so we press on through it. This is the center where I used the washi tape to cover over the problem area and added a couple of floral embellishments to pick it up and make it look more special. And we have more journaling areas. I put another pocket here, again, to bring more of that dark navy through the journal. Put another tag and put one of the new bookmarks I just got through filming and, and uploading a few days ago. Stuck one of those in there. And um, 
So then we progress on. I added this lady here uh, to this double spread, which is nice because the doily is um, a short section there. And uh, then we move on through more florals and lace patterns. I added this floral here another one there and here we're winding up with the stitched coffee dyed paper the rest of the doily and the back cover and uh, the well I guess it's the inside back of the signature and the back cover and so then all I had to do was put on my closure and I was introduced recently to a Tim Holtz product after watching one of his videos and I don't know what they call these but it's like this little raised um, let me turn it at, at a side you can see how it's kind of raised up there and it has a knob on top and it literally you screw it in so here's the other side uh, and you can see the screw. So I made a hole with my owl and stuck the screw through and then attached this and then you know just turned it to tighten it. And so that gives me that nice little raised nub there. And, and you're asking well why would you want to do that? Well it's because I made a loop out of the elastic cording that I have on hand and I glued it to the inside back and then I put a piece of ephemera from the um, master board that I used here so I glued that on to hold that in place and then I put a brad in and I think you can see the the back of that right there and the brad uh, is there to help hold the paper in place that's holding this and uh, it's a, a little bit looser than I had planned to but if someone myself or someone else were to come along and add more ephemera in here this little journal is going to uh, thicken up and then uh, I didn't want it to sit for a long time with the elastic being pulled tight that's a good way to stretch it out and then you, then you really have a problem so it's a little bit loose but obviously very easy to put on and take off as as a result of that so that's how I closed it and um, I'm real happy with how it turned out and um, you know like everything you maybe have a few little problems along the way but you figure out how to solve them and and uh, go on so I hope you like the finished product and um, if so please give the video a like and uh, give me your feedback and comments I would appreciate hearing from you and um, I thank you so much for being with me and staying with me to the end and I hope you've enjoyed it I've enjoyed making it and so for now, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.